Hi, thanks for tuning back in. My name's Gwem and I want to talk some more about my EMU SP1200 sampler. Now, the track today I want to discuss is a remix of a good friend of mine called Clearer, who's a Berlin-based uh, chiptune musician. And at the end of last year, I did a remix of his track Gol Galad, uh, which I will play to you now. Great. So I will uh, tell you how much sample memory that used. Okay, that used eight seconds of the 10 second sample memory of the SP1200. Let's listen to the individual samples now. Okay, there's a lot of um, parts of the track there. So the first samples are from the original Clearer track and they're from the Nintendo Game Boy. As you can tell, I've put some reverb on. Let's just listen to it without the reverb as well. Uh, that is a bass sound, which I sampled from a Novation bass station. There's two acid phrases that I sampled from uh, Roland TB3, which is a sort of a 303 clone. Let's go on to the second bank. Breakbeat sample. OK, 
kick drum, hi hat, a snare, and a rim shot. Now, those four samples were sampled from a Roland TR8 drum machine. And the snare drum is actually a, a combination of the snare and a clap together to make it sound a bit fatter. The break beat's a little thinner than I would normally use because it's got a fall to the floor pattern as well, which will thicken it out. Let's check bank C. And that is all the samples and that made up that remix. Let's go through each track section. Segment one. That's like the main meat and potatoes of the track right there. So you've got the original clearer riff. Which I thought was super catchy and I wanted to base my remix around them. And over the top you've got the acid line playing. In order to sample those I actually pitched the whole 303 up an octave and I also doubled the tempo and I slowed everything down to half speed in the sampler to give it a bit more room. The reason you do that is because the maximum um, memory of the SP1200 is quite limited. It's only 10 seconds and the maximum length one sample can be is two and a half seconds. <laughs> So you really need to make the most of um, what little memory you have. Let's go on to the next section. So that's a sort of electro breakbeat section which I which I quite like. It uses the third original clearer sample. Which provides a nice background. Now the kick drum sound, which is clearly a 909 type of kick, but I have processed it quite a lot. So it's quite a short sound and I wanted to preserve the attack transient so it would be more punchy. So I didn't do any weird pitching in the SP1200 to make it sound as close to the original as possible. And then I scooped out a ton of mid-range in the mixer. Um, and I quite like the, the way that turned out. Let's go on to the next segment. <laughs> Now that ute section of the introduction used a droning bass sound, which as I said, I sampled from the Novation bass station. So I used the multi -tri pitch trick to play in a bass line. So I'm not sure I explained this particularly well in the previous video, but what you get when you go into multi-pitch on the SP1200 is a major scale. But you can ch individually change the pitch of each of the eight notes in the scale. So that's clearly a major scale. So 
you can change the pitches of each of the individual notes. So when you program the bass line, you know you're going to be in key. Let's go on to the next section of the track. That's just the original clearer sample. Actually, he'd started his track in that way and I thought it was quite catchy. The only thing I did to his original track was to, well, at least that section of it, was to slow it down a bit. So there's no clearer samples in that section of the track. But we do have an offbeat bass. Now it's still that bass sample, but I can cut it short. And the way I do that is to have an empty instrument on one of the other keys, which is programmed for the same output track. So when I play that key, it will stop whatever sound is playing on the same track. Like that. So I can switch from the droning bass sound to like a more offbeat stabby bass sound. It's a breakdown for the electro section. Now my finger drumming's not the best, um, but somehow when I recorded that section I was incredibly frustrated. And I don't know how, but I managed to perfectly re-trigger the acid line and normally wouldn't be able to do that. Let's go on to section eight. <laughs> Everything working together there. That's part of the outro to the track. You'll notice I've used a lot of the rim shot. It's a percussion effect which I quite like. And I quite often find that the rhythm you play doesn't necessarily matter so much as the fact that it's there at all. Let's go on to the next segment. More outro. Just three instruments left at that point. And we finish with the single kick drum sound. I've forgotten one thing, and that is the compressor. Let's go back to section eight. So this is section eight of the track again. The compressor is on there. I'm gonna switch it on and off with this bypass button. You can hear it very easily. When I bypass the compressor, the track loses kind of all punch and energy. This is no compressor. This is with the compressor on. It sounds good and lively with, the, with this um, really nice compressor. It has a really good pump to it. I also use the Alasis Nano Compressor when I want a pumpy techno thing. And a lot of people use the classic um, Alasis 3630 compressor, which sounds really good for that as well. I actually prefer this really nice compressor these days because compared to the Alasis units, it sounds a tiny bit less harsh and there's a lot less noise. I mean, sometimes you want that kind of dirty compression sound, but I wanted a more clean sound for this. And there's plenty of pump in that really nice compressor. So I hope this... Description of my clearer Gold Gala remix has been interesting.
consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time.